There are a few different ways of creating template files for DaVinci Resolve, but I think I've just found the best one yet, and that's using DaVinci Resolve bins. Check it out. I've got an icon on my desktop, I double click, DaVinci Resolve opens and starts a brand new project. But if you have a look in my media pool, I've got timelines that are all set up and ready to go, an effects bin full of all the effects that I commonly use, including compound clips, PNGs, and an audio folder full of awesome music and sound effects from audio.com who just happen to be sponsoring this very video. Then I can hit save, save this project as whatever I like, and that desktop preset will never be overwritten. So I can always double click it to open up a project and have everything I need there ready and waiting so I can start my edit right away. And you can set up as many of these as you like. So you can have different versions for the different types of edits that you work on, which is why I prefer these to power bins because you've only got the types of assets you require for the type of project that you're working on. Plus, you can store things like compound clips, future compositions, and timelines in these, which you simply can't do in power bins. So they're simple to set up and they can save you loads of time. It's open to Virtual Resolve, and I'll show you how. So here we are on the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. Now, the first thing we need to do, click on the little cog bottom right hand corner to open up your project settings and set your project settings. So I'm going to set my timeline resolution to 4K and my timeline frame rate to 30 frames. Set anything you need to do within here and then simply hit save. Now, what I also like to do, click on DaVinci Resolve top left, go to preferences, click on user at the top and then editing from the left. Now, a super quick tip, the start time code is in here. By default, it does start at 01. I know it annoys some people, so you can set that to 00 if you wish. Now, we're going to create some timelines. So what I want to do is just to increase my number of video tracks and audio tracks. So I'm going to go with about three each. It just makes life a little bit easier when you're creating those timelines. Once that's done, simply hit save. So we're just setting up the project with the project settings in the usual way so that it's all ready for us when we actually open this template. Next up, we need to start creating some bins and then we can start creating those timelines. So first thing, open up your media ball top left so you can see it over here and make sure you can see this extra little window on the side. If you don't, simply click on this icon, very top left hand corner to open this up. Now the first bin you need to make is your top level bin. So underneath master here, simply right click, click on new bin, it'll create bin one and then give it a name. This is going to be the name of your template essentially. You can change it later on, but I'm just going to put Mr. Alex Tech for now. So now we've got this Mr. Alex Tech bin and we're going to put all of our additional bins within our Mr. Alex Tech bin. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a timelines bin. So either underneath it here on the left or in this main area here on the right, right click, new bin, it's create bin number two. I'm going to call this timelines. We can open that up and now we've got this bin ready to create our timelines. So now we can create our very first timeline. So I'm just going to right click once again, go to timelines and create a new timeline. And then we just set the timeline up to whatever we need it to be. So first of all, I'll give it a name. This one's just gonna be called YT 4K 30 for me. I've got my three video tracks and three audio tracks already set. I'm gonna untick the use project settings. We'll go to format and we'll just double check that that's all correct, which it is because it's pulled through from our project settings. And then we're gonna simply hit create. And then all you need to do at this point is to create this timeline, set this timeline up in the manner that you usually would. So basically this is gonna be the starting point for your timeline every single time you open this project. So you can set levels, you can add things, you can change names, add effects, all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna give you a quick demo for what I would usually do, but feel free to customize this to get it exactly as you want it. So I'm not gonna do anything too fancy. I've got all of my tracks, my video and audio. I'm gonna name them. So I've got video one. If I just give that a click, I can change the name. So this would be A-roll for example. Video two would be B-roll. Let's change my audio one to be voiceover. Audio two would probably be music. You get the idea. We can just customize these as we need to. Now, what I would also do is set all of my levels, my mixer. So I'm gonna open up my mixer, top right hand corner, give that a click. And then we've got these little levels. So my voiceover, I'm gonna leave that at zero. Music, generally I like that to be about minus 25. And audio three would probably be sound effects, so I'll make that about minus 15. Just set the levels, as I say, as you usually would. Something else I would always do at this point, open up my effects library, go to the audio effects, and then just drop any audio effects that you need. So for example, I've got noise reduction. I may want that on my voiceover track. So we're gonna give it a click, 
drop it on here, not actually on the timeline, but on the voiceover area on the left. It'll pop up, customize it, set all the options as you need to, and then any piece of audio that you drop on this voiceover audio track will have your noise reduction effects applied. Simple. Now, because I work on YouTube a lot, I've got this main 16 by nine projects, but I also want a vertical one. Now, what I could do in the timelines, right click again, timelines, create a new timeline, and then repeat the entire process, but this time making it a different resolution. But there's a faster way. Instead, what we're gonna do, right click on your YouTube 4K30 or whatever you've set, come down to duplicate timeline, and it's gonna create a duplicate. Give the title underneath a quick double click and then you can rename it. So I'm just gonna call this YT Shorts. And because we haven't imported any media yet, we can still customize the timeline frame rate and resolution as we need to. So we can right click on YouTube Shorts, Timelines, Timeline Settings, and I can change the resolution and the frame rate. So I'm gonna leave my frame rate at 30, but I'm gonna set this to be 1080 by 1920, which is a good vertical 1080p resolution. Click on OK. And if we double click to open it up, we've got our vertical aspect ratio, but all of the levels are still set. We've got all of our names done and my voiceover already has my noise reduction applied. Now, while I've got this short open, something else I like to do because shorts need to be less than 60 seconds, Right here in the top right hand corner, you've got a little time code. If we give that a click, you can type in here. So I'm going to put 5900 and it's going to jump me straight to the 59 seconds mark. And then I'm going to simply hit M on my keyboard to add a marker to this timeline so that when I do open it, it's really obvious where my 59 second limit is. So I know not to exceed this to make sure that it is indeed a YouTube short. Simple. So we've made a bin and we've set up some timelines, but now we want to create a few more bins and start importing some other stuff which you might use in future projects. So I've got this folder outside of DaVinci Resolve. I've just opened it up and within here I've set up a couple of folders. Now this folder is designed to always be there. It's not my downloads or my desktop. Things aren't going to get moved. They're always going to be in this location, which is really important. So what I'm going to do, grab this PNGs folder, which within it has got a bunch of PNGs that I use. Rather than having to manually create the bin, instead what we can do is grab PNGs, click, hold, drag it over to Mr. Alex Tech. So I'm actually hovering my mouse over the name, release, and it will create that folder called PNGs and it'll import all the images from that folder ready to go. Now this also works for subfolders. So I've got my audio folder here. If I open that up, I've got music and I've got sound effects and within there I've got obviously music and sound effects. So if I go back, click on my mouse, hold, drag audio to Mr. Alex Tech, release, and it's gonna create an audio folder with music and sound effects. If you're in need of quality music and sound effects, not just for YouTube, but for any professional project, why not check out Audio? It's a music subscription service that has a highly created catalog of real music and sound effects. And when I say real music, I mean real music produced by real artists and real bands that's just been licensed out for us to use on audio. That means it's a real great authentic selection of music that's been handpicked by the guys and girls at audio. And it's already used by thousands of top creators and global brands like Nike, Netflix, Toyota and Nintendo. Their Audio Pro license gives you unlimited access to all of their music and all of their sound effects, and it's available for a special price at the moment of just 59 bucks for your first year. That's over 70% off. And that Audio Pro license doesn't just cover you for YouTube. It covers everything from podcasts, video games, films, and even TV. So you're covered for literally every single project. To get started, simply click the link down in the description below or head over to audio.com forward slash Alex and then use the code Alex70 to get your 70% off. Now, quick tip, you can't actually have empty bins within this template file because when you create it, any empty bins are actually dropped off automatically. So you just need to make sure that you put something in all of the bins that you want to stay. Right, next up, let me show you how I create this little effects bin as well. So same process as before, Mr. Alex Tech. I'm gonna right click, new bin, and we're gonna call this one effects. And then we're gonna open it up. And then we're gonna to start to import any effects that we may want. Now, what I'm actually gonna do at this point is just import a video. It's not gonna stay there, we're gonna delete it in a moment, but it's just helpful for reference when we're creating our effects. So I'm gonna drop this on my timeline like so, and then we can just start to create all of our effects. So let's start off with something simple like a snap zoom. 
I'm going to do this using an adjustment clip. So within our effects library, I'm going to go to effects. I'm going to grab an adjustment clip. We'll put it on top of our footage like so. We'll give it a click in the inspector. We've got our transform options. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. And now wherever that adjustment clip is, will automatically snap in and snap out. So now we just need to save this to our bin. Still within the inspector, go to file, and then you've got name. So let's just call this snap zoom. You'll see the name change on the timeline. Give it a click, hold your mouse, drag it into your effects bin, and then you can just delete it off your timeline and whenever you want it, drag it in. It's there with a snap zoom ready to go. And you can just repeat this process for all the things that you might need. So let's just do another one. Put this on here. This time we're going to go to effects again, but I'm going to have a little search for one of my magic zoom tools. I use magic zoom version two. We'll put that on there in the inspector effects. I can customize it to get it looking however I want it. Let's go with something like this file. Give it a name magic zoom. Drag it into our effects bin. Done. It's ready. Now this also works for titles. So if we go to titles, let's just grab jitter. It says sample at the minute, we'll call this Mr. Alex Tech as well. We can change the font to something else. We can change the size, the color, do whatever we want to it. Once again, file, it's called Jitter at the minute, we'll call this Jitter Alex. Click, drag into my effects bin, delete it, and now I've got this simple title ready to go. We can just drop it on any project we need. Another handy use for this, generators. If you use any brand colors, I use solid colors all the time. They're usually oranges and grays and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna grab my solid color, give it a click in the inspector, change the color of it as we need to. So let's make my little orange like so. File, we'll call this orange, grab the generator, drop it in there. We can delete it off the timeline and now we've got our orange solid color as well. This works for pretty much anything, including compound clips, which is a really great thing because you can't actually use compound clips within power bins. So this is a really great use of this. Sweet, we've created our project, we've created loads of bins and effects, we've imported our music and our PNGs and created all of our timelines. So the last thing we need to do is to actually create our template file, which is the easiest bit. So still within the project, in the media pool, all we're going to do, go to our Mr. Alex Tech, our top level name, whatever you called it, right click, and then we're going to export bin. It'll ask us to give it a name and a save location. So I'm just gonna drop this one onto my desktop, but you can save it wherever you want it. Now I'm actually just gonna close DaVinci Resolve, and it's gonna ask me if I want to save this project. I would advise first time around, save it, because you might need to come in and make any amendments. I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm not gonna hit save for now. And now on my desktop, I've got my Mr. Alex Tech template file. If I give it a double click, DaVinci Resolve is gonna open up. If I jump into the edit page, I've got my timelines ready to go, my PNGs, my audio, music and sound effects, and all of my effects. I can just drop them onto my timeline and it's all ready to go. At any point, I'm just gonna hit Control and S to do a save. It's gonna ask me to give it a new name. I'm gonna just go with new project, hit save and it's simply gonna save that project as normal. And then at any point, we just close this down. Our template is still there. I open it back up whenever I want to start a new edit. Resolve will open up and all of our standard template stuff will be there ready for us so we can start editing. Easy. And that's it, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did down in the comments below. See ya.